computer. All right, here we go. Let's, um, I'm going to leave it in gallery view off to the side, just so if you guys want to talk, you can always join in. Um, welcome to tonight's Zine Zoom evening. We're going to be covering details about the uh, NEBA Zine Swap for 2021. This has become an annual idea for the group. Uh, we'll have the summertime to enjoy making your zine or zine. Sometimes people make two. Two is the limit, though you can't do more than two. Um, and it's due September the 15th. So that gives you plenty of time to get all your thoughts together. Um, what you're looking at here is the last blog post from the first time we did it. And this shows you a sample here going by of what we're looking for here. So we're going to be doing an eight and a half by 11. You can do Xerox laser or inkjet, um, just black and white. And um, you'll notice in my zine here called Steps to Abstraction that it's um, got an educational component, but it's also kind of some of the feminist imagery that I'm, most people know me for. Um, I think it's important to include what you just saw there, which is um, a little plate on the back that explains that it's um, a NEBA uh, zine swap project. Your contact, contact information would be wise um, and maybe definitely um, putting your name on it and having a title, which some people last year didn't really do, which is okay. Um, zines are meant to be low key, um, but I think it would be nice to, to step it up a little with um, the contact information. So I call what I created, um, which is based on an original design uh, by Sammy Boris, um, which I just kind of morphed to make it be more workable for us. Um, it's a PDF that actually folds up and becomes the actual zine as a sample. So it's like a template. Um, you could take this PDF into Photoshop and make it into a Photoshop file and white out all the panels and just fill it in, which is what Sarah Ringler did. And when we look at samples in a minute, you'll see that she basically left the frame with the page number in place and worked directly on top of it in Photoshop to, to, to use it as directly as a template. Um, but you can create a template of your own and it's really super easy. And I was going to, once we have discussions about it fuller, about what actually people want to have, do we want to have a standardized idea or do we want to just have the suggestions of like, make this yourself? I don't like the idea of having a template where everybody fills it in exactly the same way. I'd rather it be um, something that's more custom for every person. So I'm not really leaning towards wanting a template to be given that has exactly the same content. Um, so I think um, you, you're going to see a lot of different ways of going about doing this. Carolyn, you have a question. Um, I, I would agree with you about not um, man, making it mandatory to use some kind of template because I think the center fold is really nice when you open it up in a zine and it's some, you know, it goes across the center fold. Because right, having can, a double page spreads, um, yeah. having two of those existing, those would be in pages six, seven, and what, three? Uh, well, it's cover in the back well, cover. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, center. you could have a wraparound cover back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and a wraparound cover back. Yeah. Um, right. In this post, which is a very good source of information, you have two really wonderful videos done by um, NEPA member Susan Gaylord on how to do this hot dog, which is also called a hamburger, which is also called a center cut accordion. Um, it's also called an ox plow. So it has all these different names and there are a whole lot of structures in bookbinding that have multiple names like that. So that's not so unusual. The second one is the one that I like the best because it, takes and jumps off of that eight and a half by 11 and gives you ideas for very unusual, tall, thin, short, long, 
square versions, you know, by changing the dimensions, which you're not going to be doing for this zine project, but it's good information for yourself is what I'm suggesting. Um, but you'll enjoy that. And you can see how as a very, very simple collage and then go right to the Xerox machine. This is just simple, but, but really good. You know, the wonderful, wonderful ideas playing um, with the visuals, the different style of how the application is, the way it moves across the page, just very simple and nice. Um, um, I would say, Gail, um, kudos to you. We're going to look at, uh, we'll take a look at Blame in a few minutes, but the same sort of idea where it's really not a crazy, it's more about the thought and the concept than it is about the execution. And, and zines have a tradition of being loose and fast and raw. And so, I mean, mine, mine aren't that way. I usually highly stylize everything and I'm very precise, but um, the history behind it is, and so it's kind of interesting. Um, the Z, a little bit of the overview of zine history is here. I'm gonna show you um, the fact that the word became like known as a word in 1940 isn't really to me where it started. Um, just because um, Russ Chavanet um, came up with this idea and used this word one time doesn't really work for me as the beginning. I think the beginning has, has a huge backstory. Um, it's anything that's self-published quick. And that's like, you think about like, I went to William and Mary and Colonial American kind of documents that got thrown into the mail writing of the postal writers, you know, those kinds of propaganda pieces where they, somebody sat there and wrote on a piece of parchment like 20 copies of the same thing, you know, as his like, you know, demand or whatever. You know, that is sort of kind of what we're talking about here. Um, it's people who want to have a voice and have something to say, no matter how crazy or weird or funny or sexy or naughty or whatever it is, it's um, a voice that people want to have and put it out there. And they want to do it so badly that they're willing to just go to Staples and rattle it off and keep it you know, I don't know. It works for me as a, as a sub as a subject, and my collection. It worked for me as a consumer of artist books and weird kind of funky printed materials. Um, I love to buy things like that, not only like to use maybe mixed media, but to collect and keep as in its original state. And it just kind of like started happening where I noticed it. Um, so I have a lot of things from 2009 and I'm going to show you my collection like the first things and what really got me started into it and thinking about it and how it's um, kind of become something different for me over the years. Um, so you'll see a little bit of my collection. Um, you, I'm going to show you in just a few minutes here. I guess we could jump on right on over there because it's all in the same queue here. Um, yeah, so this um, Russ Cabanet, um, he was... Um, He was an interesting guy. He was a famous chess player. Let's see, where is he? Is he up here? Yeah, here he is. He was a famous chess player. And he did, um, this is the very first like official zane, according to most people. It's called Detours. And you can see it's in like different colors of pen. Um, 1940, um, it held up pretty good. Yeah, and it's definitely a fanzine. It's about, it's, it's about like, you know, famous people and interesting thoughts, you know, about theater and contemporary cultural things from 1940. Yeah. Um, here's a little bit later one. And I think, I, I don't remember, this is, um, this is a different person. I don't, rem I don't remember what they said this person was. But this mm -hmm. is another early one. So you can see it's a lot of hand done stuff. It's a lot of actually literally like typewriter work, um, pencil and ink. Here's uh, Ray Bradbury early imagination. Yeah, so um, for me, what got this guy did, he does a nice, has a nice blog, uh, Jim Dorian. Um, things like this. Um, wow. This is, um, Ralph Waldo Emerson and um, I don't remember the woman's name right now. Another woman. 
let's see, I don't remember who the other woman was at the moment. But anyway, they did um, The Dial. And this is another early one that a lot of people uh, really love and collect. And it's very basic. It, it's not so exciting visually, um, which is, and there's a lot of handwriting as well. Um, so the idea that a lot of the zines that are still on the market that you see and books about zines and a lot of these zines that are more serious, they are, they're more like literature or poetry. They're not exactly the kind of zines that I find interesting. Um, so when I had a booth um, for those years, um, since we had to have a break, I was getting some good momentum and was really excited. Um, in the Cyclorama in Boston, the, the Boston Art Book Fairs, you know, the same people that were there or the Dystros, which are zine distribution groups where they, you have like one person who, okay, here, I forgot to admit somebody. Let me, hi, Penny. Uh, let's say hi to Penny when she gets in here. Um, yeah, so the Dystros would have a whole bunch of different zines. And then that guy, that one guy goes with all of these different people's zines as a group and gets a booth at a zine fest. Okay, that makes so you don't have to have 20 zeners sitting there with their own little single zine or two. Um, you can have a whole table full of stuff and they also end up going with um, the, the, the Dystros sometimes have their own cool logos and they do t-shirts and bumper stickers sometimes and they might do compilations of like a bunch of their artists and their, their own publications. So sometimes it kind of riffs off into merchandise, which is another cool thing about contemporary zine world, the contemporary zine world. But um, a lot of it, I, when I was walking around and I was, I had a, a big wad of, a fat, as they would say, a fat stack of Benji's or a big wad of cash in my hands. And I was trying to actually buy and collect. And I found that there was a ton of stuff out there that I'm sure it's fascinating. And if you like to read, I want visual zines and I don't mind there being some writing but I find that the ones that lean more towards the art world and less towards literary world are the ones that I have collected the most. So this is another one of those early ones. Um, and it keeps coming up for auction. It comes up like the whole set or like 20 of them. Um, they, occasionally you'll find one at a time, but they're, they're very collectible. Um, so that could be something interesting if you're into um, zinc collecting. Um, that's not really my saying. Let me just get back over here. <clears throat> okay, so you're going to need to get your PDF off the website. Here's a couple of other people that I love. My collection started, um, Sarah Capello is this woman's name. Let's uh, hear her. Yeah, Sarah Capello. Her, her zines are really just smart and cute and quick and fun. And I think she charged like $2. You know, so I usually buy a bunch of them when I see her. Um, they're just fun little um, sillinesses. Um, she has hairy, she, she never shaves her legs, which I'm going to show you the hairy uh, uh, yams, gams uh, one that, of hers in a few minutes, but she's really fun. And again, you're seeing a consistent style, even though they're very different. Um, and she makes sure to have a great logo. She gives you the information. So it's well done and smart, but really casual and funny and tapping into uh, something good, you know, that a lot of, a lot of different types of people would want to have a zine that's like this. Um, there are categories of zines that are a little scary for some people. Um, there's, there's, obviously there's like uh, social activism, there's um, body positivity, there's LGBTQ, IA, excuse me, there's um, all kinds of activism of all types. There's a huge Black Lives Matter movement in the zines and BIPOC um, as, a, as a whole, just generally, there's more and more of that. Um, there's a, a whole bunch of animal related zines. There's the fan zine, which is about celebrities. There's um, Perizine, P-E-R-I zine, um, which stands for personal. Um, Perizines are some of the ones that are the ones that are mostly written. Um, they're more or less like long diaries or just um, short stories and things about people's lives. Occasionally, they'll have a little bit of other visual content added, which I think helps them. 
Um, and my collection covers a lot of that. Um, there's a whole uh, DIY, do it yourself or um, instructional type, how to kind of related ones that are really fun. And then there's um, obviously like every genre of um, ga the gaming world is covered and the sci-fi fantasy slash comic book related type people have a whole world um, unto themselves that's pretty unusual. I would say regardless of what your fetish or compulsion or hobby, you're gonna find a zine out there for you. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're gonna be really surprised when you start Googling. Um, people ask me a lot about where do you get these zines. Um, you can just start Googling, yeah. So basically um, it's an open thing and um, everything has to be in black and white. Everything is, I, I used to say single-sided, so this year we're gonna go with a double-sided. Marie um, gave us the first double-sided last year. Um, you can do up to two, and you need to save it as a PDF. And um, at this point, we want to hopefully have a zine gathering where we can bring them in person but I would say that we're going to share by PDF absolutely 100% regardless. And I am going to show you right now how this sharing works. And whoever signs up um, in the survey that I'm going to be sending in two days, which you're committing to doing it, and I will give you access to the Google Drive. Neva's Google Drive has um, a zine swap folder on the drive. Um, I'm going to show you what last year's folder looked like. Um, so when we open it up, um, you're going to be dumping your PDFs and I'm going to fold up a set and take photos of everybody. So you will be getting, um, like here you're going to see, let's make it look like this instead. Um, you're going to see that um, I photographed everything. I use a pale gray background, just keep it simple and everybody gets copies of everything so that you can have it. I wanted, did want to just hop over here for a second. Let's just look at this. Um, so I wanted to open this one. Um, my screen brightness is a little low. There we go, that looks better. Um, this is Sarah David Ringler's part of her piece. And you can see here what I meant by her taking out the content or just putting in new. Um, now that I'm looking at it, I feel like it's a little bit different, isn't it? It is a little different. She customized that. I thought, I looked at that, then when I first saw that, I thought that she plugged and chucked. But that would be a strategy. Yeah, so let's get back into the folder. So everybody will be given access to the 2021 zine swap folder, and then it you'll have your you'll have your your images. You'll have the all the PDFs. So you'll drop your PDF in here so that everybody actually who officially you know we're not blanketing the world with these PDFs. We're only swapping with each other at this point and with Neba. Okay, and that's the other part of the the equation here. Everybody needs to, this document will exist as well for us um, in the new folder when I get this all set up tomorrow. Uh, it's loading, hold that thought. I don't know why it's taking so long to load, but there we go. Okay, so basically everybody is going to have everybody's name and a description and I'm gonna, it'll be empty and I will ask for the participant's name, the zine title, what is your title? What is your mailing address? You need the mailing address for me so that I can send you the box, whatever the box ends up being. Um, this is a release statement. So um, you just basically are gonna plug your name, there's where the X's are, which is like where the name is. So you're just gonna like basically fill it in and then you're gonna make a statement a single sentence that explains what the deal is uh, with your zine. And it's all in one word document. So you will log on and add this. If you cannot do the Google Drive, I'm happy to add it for you via email. Okay. But everybody that's in the project will be able to have access to this in a very condensed, concise, quick and easy way to see what's going on. So um, I thought that made the most sense. All right. Um, back over here, not there. Let's close that. Okay. Um, basically, um, any questions can come my way. Yeah, any questions can come my way. So here are the results of last year's. The red pillow box was a single 
large sheet that just got cut out and scored and folded up and uh, use a little of the double tack, which is like a fancy double stick tape that a lot of bookbinders really enjoy that's acid free to make it close. And I bought a absolute ton of these stickers for us um, just as a gift. Um, we have a ton of Nina stickers and we have a new one too. Um, let me just grab it so that you can see the new one. Well, that was uh, not so easy. Where the heck is it? Well, I can't show it to you because I can't find it. Well, sorry, that didn't work out too good. Anyway, it's um, it's actually the the other logo. It's a horizontal and with white, black, and red. It's it's the up in the corner here. It's our our, our actually this guy right here. I was thinking that we might actually um, invest in maybe making a sticker that says 2021 zine swap underneath there. Um, so that may be something that um, we do. Um, I get these deals for 50 for like 19.99 shipped, um, which is pretty good. And um, if that works out, we'll do that. All right, so let me slide that over so I can get there. Yeah, so here you're seeing some of what we did. Um, it worked out really well, even with uh, COVID, with the swap. So here's Marie's with the two-sided, so you can fold it inside out. I I've been doing two-sided a lot. Oh, there you go. Carolyn scored scored a, a sticker. That's our sticker. Doesn't that look good? That's a nice one. Yeah, it's a little bit smaller than a business card, a little thinner, like uh, the rectangle's a little thinner. Yeah. I loved um, Dennis. Uh, Dennis' approach, he noticed that his blotter, his actual um, date blotter, was getting funky from a spill and just went with that as a complete idea. I mean, thinking things, I mean, you don't have to go super complicated to get a really great idea. And I think sticking with your style brand wise makes more sense. So Susan's with the, you know, obviously um, getting some calligraphy involved uh, makes sense to me um, that she would choose that. And it's also an uplifting idea. Why make an angry rant? Um, even my rants aren't angry. My rants are funny. They're a little scary sometimes, but they're funny. You know, let's, let's just uh, get our, our sense of humor. We can get our anger out in, in a more positive way, I guess, is the, or sadness or whatever your funk is. Yeah. Anya's was lovely. Um, I thought that was very well spaced. I mean, immaculate on the spacing there. Yeah. I did that Staples 28 pound um, when I copied my PDFs and it just had so much better black than my home laser. So sometimes you can up the output even, I mean, there was like, you know, what, 11 or 12 cents each. You know, they were, they were great. Here's Rebecca's little critters. I have a thing for these animal zines, man. You're gonna see some funny ones in just a minute here. Obviously, Merkin. Um, I had a I had a a friend from high school make a Merkin purchase on Etsy recently. Can you believe that? Isn't that weird? A Georgia person, like a total Trump conservative, bought a Merkin. What the heck? I love that. Three dollars shipped. You know? Wow. Yeah. So Carolyn decided to go for two. Did you just have so much fun you couldn't help yourself? Yes. I wanted one for each of my bodies at work. Yeah. I thought, man, I thought Susan's was fun too. All the different ways to measure a single dolphin. Yeah, so here we're getting into the, like there were, you know, was no name on it. And that, that bothered me a little bit, but I, I, you know, again, it's a zine swap. You're gonna get a crazy array of content and everybody does what they do. Um, I think it makes sense though, to kind of make it a, a big suggestion. Here is blame. Yeah. I really thought that was powerful, Gail. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And my fondness for kitty cats, obviously. Um, Alice's, um, 
with the going across the fold so that part of the image was in one direction and part of the image in the other. Oh, she, the engineering on hers was really smart. And then we had to give Stephanie um, a little break with the rules. This year, we're not going with any breaks with the rules. You gotta make your hot dog, darn it. You gotta do a hot dog. Um, I thought that this was interesting and I like having the video that gives you more of a sense of it. And it's a new construction that you can think of as a possibility for yourself. But I really think it makes more sense for everybody to actually do it the right way. And the Zine Mistress, whoosh, it's going to be a little hard, more hardcore in her, um, <laughs> her enforcement of rules this year. Okay, yeah, excellent. Okay, great. So we're going to step it up. So hopefully somebody is feeling like making a little zine that is the colophon. Um, all the access to the logos and everything are on the drive will be in that same folder too. So if you want to drop your logo in, you can do that. Um, so that'll work itself out pretty good. I, I didn't put this in the newsletter, but since Carolyn's here, I just have to show you that it's in this tab. It's right here. This is a total sidetrack. Oh, oh my God. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I'm going to sign up for this as soon as I have money. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Gonna Register now. We're going to print some fish. Yeah, using I real was thinking fish. Of, um, some, what about sh big, big ass shrimp with heads still on? Yes. An octopus, you can do squid, shells, oh, you can oh, print it. You there's can a lot going on in here. Very, very cool. Very cool indeed. All right. Okay, so the next thing on this magical tour of uh, Zanes, I'm going to show you some images from my slaw, um, from my actual collection, and this, this should be fun. Let's get this going. Where is the, select all, here, sorry about that, I don't know why, okay, Keanu, Keanu, you will get to him in a minute, yeah. Yeah, so you can see that there's a lot of different ways to go um, with the zine world. So this is my very first zine purchase. It was purchased from Printed Matter in uh, New York from a guy that is in Singapore. And they're very tiny. These are they were quite small. Um, these are all in the category of what's referred to as miniature, which is under three inches. Um, Nowhere in any of this information does it tell the person's name, which I think is interesting. Um, just Monster Gallery is a handle. And there are a lot of people in the zine world that do this. Um, I like the consistency. I like the quirkiness of it. It really is just a Xerox. It's like pen and ink or you know, pen or probably just pen. Yeah, very straightforward. Um, this is the second one I purchased. Z Artifacts um, has got a bunch of different ones out, out and they do a pretty high quality color zine on the outside cover. And this is just basically folded in half with a staple. And then it goes into a very consistent idea, which you see through a whole lot of zines. This idea of partitioning, very much like comic books or, or graphic novels. Um, it's something very consistent throughout a lot of people's zine making. Um, and there's a lot of people who use like the right or left page only and then just do a whole lot of that text. So helping to break up um, the look of a comic book into something that's more literature based um, sometimes happens. A, a lot of this stylized illustration um, is consistent in this series. And it's, it's got a, a big lean towards echo consciousness. Um, it's got a, a big um, informational kind of component, which a lot of my zines do, where you're kind of defining um, sometimes actually dictionary terms, but um, interesting um, kind of layered effects um, visually and kind of a, turning some of, of what they're explaining into abstracts. 
um, Billy uh, Bridwell, or yeah, I guess that's how you say his name. I have a, several of his. Um, he sold through a Dystro as well. So I've never actually met him, but I bought stuff from of his from different uh, zine fests and the, the Boston Book Art, Art Book Fair. Yeah. Just real straightforward, but it has not only um, an interesting look to it, but it has this sort of informational um, self-help, self-care, therapy kind of related genre that you see consistently. So um, kind of uh, like affirmations mixed in. You'll see people doing this a whole lot in different ways where it really um, kind of shows you that people are struggling. Um, the, the portraits aren't, aren't necessarily happy. Um, they take a turn and become a lot more unusual in parts of the book and then go back to like more of like these are drawings of someone the person knows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have these little sign-offs as the last. This is um, his sign-off that he uses. Yeah, interesting. Um, a lot of people want to give you that uh, colophon type information. Um, give you a little bit more of the sense of how they made it, you know, give you a sense of how many were made or and definitely con contact information. So this is things that um, you may want to consider. Yeah. Draw down gathers people's content and publishes it in a consistent way with the exact same formatting fonts and textures. And this is my favorite one of theirs. They have maybe 20 or so different versions of, and it's always a whole one artist one time, you know, one title, but it always looks exactly like this. And it's very, very simply made, but well done. Um, so we're mixing only inside of that cover material is getting the color content, but the graphic design and the repetition and the interesting uh, kind of way it's laid out. And again, it's body positivity, you know, but just really fun and spontaneous kind of project. Yeah. Here's another one of the early ones that I've gotten other others from from this artist. Heavy dark paper, you know, so that the contrast between things is not as not as sharp, you know. Um, it's a little bit different look to it. Um, I don't know if I like a dark too dark of a paper. Yeah. So a lot of content that's personal. So this is a parazine, a uh, personal zine, but it's also um, in the body positivity, body image kind of feminist category as well. Lots of the, the handles here, you know. Jenna Flack does a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, she's on Etsy and I'm on Etsy, so I buy stuff from her. Um, she, she really just does not try too hard to get it to you in, in good condition. It's really, you know, always bent, always like cheaply, you know, packaged, but it comes with like stickers and extra stuff all the time. She always adds other stuff to it, but it's just definitely Xerox and, and thrown together. It's a little beat up. You know, you can tell that she's moving on pretty quick with it, but some of them are pretty funny. Um, the girl band one is, is one of my favorites. Yeah. I have a lot of, I probably have maybe six or seven different pieces from her. Yeah. Um, here's another, that other Je uh, uh, Capello. Jessie, is it Jessie Capello? Uh, what is her last name? Let me just forward and see what her last name is. It's Sarah, Sarah Capello, not Jessie. But I just love this. Um, making a zine about something um, as silly and random as this is, is just great. I, I just love it. Yeah, you know, and it's a rant, but it's got some humor in it. It's, it's unfortunate that um, people are made to feel so weird about it that they need to make a zine about this. Uh, and again, you know, $3, $2, $2, $3, you know, you gotta be kidding me. I mean, this has brought me so much more joy than $2 you know, just amazing. Yeah. 
This one about um, sometimes you feel like you have a bug on you. Um, that's a sensation I get. I don't have, my, my legs aren't hairy like this. I only got like a few left on each leg, but when it catches a breeze, it definitely makes me think I'm getting a tick or something, mosquito bite or something. Yeah. And again, a great, uh, a great ending page here for her. This one is probably the most interesting one that I've gotten recently. I just bought this maybe a couple months ago, but it was made in 2009 by a man that has body image issues. So there, it's very unusual to me to see, um, it's usually female content, um, but really kind of interesting to really break it, the way he's breaking it down in these books is fascinating to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just strange. Yeah, good stuff though. Yeah, I bought that in 2019, but it looks like this one was in uh, 2003. Every once in a while, I run into somebody who's just doing a random little thing and it's, I, I don't remember this person's name and I don't think it's written anywhere on it. Um, he was he was at one of the zine fests and had completely handmade things that he was making while he was sitting there for the most part. Um, his little creatures, his little creatures that he drew are just wonderful. Um, I reacted very strongly to it. I think it was maybe eight dollars, but I, I just thought it was powerful. Look at this little one on the right. That is just wow. Huh. Mandrake casting a spell to banish the dark cloud hanging over this week. Mandrake. That always makes me think of England, I guess. Is Mandrake like a British, maybe a British name? I don't know. On to some of my favorite stuff. I just love how zine people that sell you and send you your zines for almost nothing, send you other little things and just spread the love in different ways. So there's stickers, there's little notes, um, just all kinds of like sometimes postcards like this one. Um, so this is one of my favorite most recent ones. Um, this is a fanzine series um, by John Scarrett. Keanu with dogs and Keanu with cats. And that's exactly what it is. <laughs> it is nothing but love of Keanu with little critters in different ways. And that's all it is. No text at all. Look at the cat hat. That is brilliant. That is just brilliant. The Sphinx, Sphinx Kitty. I want a Sphinx Kitty. That one on the left there, they're hairless, like Egyptian Sphinx Kitties. That's, if anybody ever knows of anybody with a kitten, let me know. I'm on it. <laughs> oh, my heart. And his other one, this is a Nicolas Cage eating snacks. <laughs> That's all this is. There's a postcard free with purchase. That is amazing. To come up with like why uh, i just don't even know uh, what to say but i had to buy it immediately i couldn't help myself that is just so wonderful this is a cartoon about shrimp but there are no shrimp in the cartoon um so i'm not really sure why it's called shrimps and shrimps is not really a plural word but i had a nanny when i was a kid that always said it plural and so I started saying it plural um, I, it's just like and I also chose to go opposite and say instead of saying grits to say grit like I only want one um, <laughs> that was another thing that I, I learned from her but I, I gravitated towards this because of her and because my husband and I when we have shrimps we always say gonna have some sleeps, shrimps and sleeps. Uh, something about eating shrimp makes me wanna sleep. So this is just a really random weird cartoon um, and it's a Rizzo print, which makes it like really nicely printed, 
with Rizzo's, you can tell them how many colors you get to choose um, that you want to make it. I think it's just lovely. And it's just quirky, just a really quirky zine that um, I think there's an appearance of a shrimp here at the very end. That I think right there, that's the only shrimp, I think, in the whole book. There are these um, weird creatures. Um, but anyway, um, and the idea of this editioning, an endless edition, I kind of like that idea of saying it that way. I don't know of anyone else who phrase, I've seen phrase it that way. I've seen it phrased as an open edition, but that's kind of nice. Um, this was a booth neighbor at a zine fest over in a VFW hall on the backside of Central Square. Um, she was sitting right next to me the whole time and she sold a whole bunch of these that she started making more of them um, while she was sitting there because she sold so many. It had a riddle um, and it's set up like a comic book type thing as well. It had this kind of like story about these people going on a bus and then getting off the bus and then the bus ends up crashing. Um, yeah, it's a really strange riddle. Um, and most people weren't understanding the riddle, which I think was frustrating her. So she seemed to have to explain her zine to people, which I thought was kind of unfortunate. So that's, even though I love this zine, what stayed with me about this zine is if you really want to leave a question out there, then that's fine. But if you're trying to make a certain point, you should make it. Otherwise, you're going to feel unsatisfied with how people react to it, um, which is what I saw her experience. There's a whole genre of how to and a lot of how to grow things. So here's a little section of these types of things. So here you're gonna see an herbal medicine making primer. This person is gonna show you how to make certain types of um, home things. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily follow this advice. <laughs> yeah, but it's a whole lot of writing and not much excitement visually. This one, on the other hand, is talking about growing and talking about um, how to set up um, landscapes and uh, landscape architecture kind of ideas. And it was created with a bunch of students in mind, which is nice. So you're actually seeing some of their like ideas from different students. Uh, it could be like that they were visual journaling or something about how to do different landscaping ideas. Um, they're, it's just really quirky. You know, you're not even sure what sometimes what you're looking at, but visually it works somehow. Yeah, thinking about textures, obviously, or brick patterns or stone or combining certain colors, ways to make um, all kinds of ideas. Mm -hmm. um, this is a fun little one too. This one is just a random collection of fun little quirky things. You know, this is the... Uh, table of contents, how to break into things, how to jump a car, how to open a bottle without a corkscrew. You know, I mean, this is some quality advice This, this that's included. How to, how to build a campfire. I mean, come on, you know, who, you know, when the zombie apocalypse is, we need to know this stuff, you know? Um, plus she's got a really great logo. I mean, who doesn't like a mermaid playing a ukulele? That's, that's clever. There's a whole world of very serious, serious social practice zines out there. These are zines about um, people who are doing activities related to making change in some sort of way. This particular series I bought through the Minnesota, uh, what is it called? The Minnesota Center for Book, the Book or Center for Book Arts or something like that. They have a great zine live, uh, selection in their shop. Um, this series is all formatted in a very similar way. It's that single eight and a half by 11, folded in half and then again in half. And it's meant here to not just be four panels, but to open up so that the middle, it's all, they're always formatted in a very similar way. So they're highlighting projects that had to do with social activism from different artists. So each of these little projects that it's listing is fascinating. There's some really interesting ones in, on these. Yeah. The Wish Tree, 
Ona asked participants to write down wishes on cards, hang them on trees. The museum, museum staff then gathers the wishes and returns them to Ono, who buries them at the base of her Imagine Peace Tower in Reykjavik, Iceland. Now, I know that's like totally <laughs> random and weird, but that person probably did that as a master's thesis. So, I mean, that just gives you an idea of kind of like the elaborateness of it is. Here's another really good one. I love this one. The Minstrel Cup Project, a fun destigmatizing performance with cocktails and souvenir ceramic minstrel cups to casually approach menstruation and its cultural connotations. So if you notice in the picture, these people are like drinking their cocktails out of menstrual cups, basically, at this party. <laughs> I love it. This is like perfect. This is right up my alley. So they pick different colors of paper. They have a creative way to present the content. They are highlighting people that they want to promote in some way, shape, or form. And they do it consistently over and over. So it creates a really nice series that that um, people understand and recognize as theirs. Here's another good one that has a really great wood block on the back. And the graphic design is so simple, but like fantastic. This cover is where all the love is because the rest of it is not very well laid out and it's kind of boring, but it's full of really great content about how to actually mobilize and help these people. So this zane is exactly what we're talking about here. It's getting the voices out there and trying to make people help with these, with these intense things that people care about, that they want, and it's $2. This thing is like really nicely done for two bucks. Yeah, this one's not two bucks. This is a higher end one. I think this one might've been 15 and it's a two zine set and it's Rizzo printed in the in two three colors, and it has this belt or a band going across it that's a really interesting print as an addition, additional add-on, which is kind of nice. And this is again protest art. You know, this this person is really talking about giving a voice to unheard people, and it's very basic and it's not leading. You know, you can fill in what's on that protest sign. You know, just interesting uh, the way it's done. You know, different body types, different ethnicities. And then the second edition, it goes totally into some serious surrealism and crazy. The, the second one is also about moving your ideas forward with the stride, but it's much less politicized and much more kind of conceptualized to me. I mean, it's really unusual. The second one is probably my favorite. It's getting a little weirder by the minute here. And I'm digging it. That little critter in the box over there coming out of the belly, I mean, that, that is intense. Yeah. yeah, so did I, oh, I was gonna say it stopped. Here it is right here, Babette Wagenvoort. Okay, sounds like she might be Dutch. Yeah, no wonder I'm digging it. 17 bucks, look at that. Yeah, this was out of um, the Minnesota um, selection I just got. My, one of my favorites, I know this is, sounds like absurd, but this is probably the, the person I know who makes the most money at zines. He's at every single zine event you can imagine. His name is um, Jay Morrison. Homo Cats, it's literally low-end zine. It's a very low-end Xerox that's just folded in half with some staples, but it is earth-shatteringly hilarious. Um, here are the backsides of these zines. Um, I'm not going to show you every page because some of them are pretty out there with their homoerotic references, but this gives you a sense of it. It's very much the idea of the protest um, rant where it's just like screaming out things, you know. Um, so it's like literally just artwork composited with some handwritten things here and there. Um, very, very unusual. This guy is hilarious and he merchandises this stuff like you would not believe. He has got so many little other kinds of merch. He has stickers and buttons and hooded sweatshirts and like poster prints and just the pink and crazy colors. Um, Wow. Yeah, just wow. These are $10 each and it's just that eight and a half by 11 fold and a half. 
Yeah. Unbelievably cool. And then you have, like I said, there's a whole lot of people out there with their their cat, cats, especially. There's a huge cat zine section. So we'll we'll end it with the obscene cats. And this is our our structure here again. Back to the hot dog. Um, just 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 too much fun here. You know, just really great. Um, basic basic stuff, but just funny. Uh, this is um, again a person who doesn't really. I, I haven't researched if this is a a man or a woman or anything about this person. Um, so I think it's weird that you're not putting your names on stuff. Um, I know that that's a trend, but I'd rather see a name too. You can have that information in addition. Um, <laughs> even my fleas don't want to be near you. Sometimes cats do look at you that way, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my bum tastes better than your cooking. Wow. That is some crazy, crazy thought process to create that zing. Love it. Love it. Okay, let's hit escape and get on out of there. All right. Pretty funny stuff. <laughs> oh, yes. So what do we think of zines? Pretty interesting ideas here is everybody gonna do a zine oh yeah penny we didn't get to say hi to you you came in after we said did our hellos to everyone how are you doing i i i know i i i had another uh something else i had to do um i love it i i still call them zines i'm such an <laughs> idiot about them <laughs> i i don't i mean i i'd love to do one i'm not sure i still understand I mean, um, it could be whatever you want it to be. There are a whole lot of people who do abstract imagery. Um, there are a whole lot of people who use like old prints that didn't quite work out because when you fold it up, you got those great textures and then you could work into it. I mean, it could be completely just a visual piece and not have anything to do with anything. Um, mm -hmm. I find that um, I have ideas for zines now that I'm into it, you know, I have new ideas all the time. And I had, um, based on the pictures uh, this afternoon, I did a mock-up um, that's so bright that you're not gonna be able to see it, isn't it? Yeah, this light's too bright. Mm. Basically, I inked my hand, boom. It's actually on the wall over here. I inked my hand and then I drew like a stop, you know, that, you know, in it. And it's called Stop, a, a DYI therapy zine, okay? And each page, is going to have like that hand little teeny down the middle all the way through the zane and then one two things on each so the this is just what i wrote just quickly i mean i did this in like 15 minutes today right before right before we came stop waiting it's time stop relying on others i mean it's just like one after another it's like inspirational kind of ideas and what made me think of it was not only looking at some of these zines that are like, you know, get off your ass and get busy kind of thoughts or, you know, quit being lazy or, you know, critically think more, don't believe what you read all the time. You know, these kinds of ideas, I thought, well, you know, why not pick some of those that show where my head's at, you know? Um, and I also came across some other people's ideas that didn't necessarily say stop at the beginning of every expression, but I found this one that I thought was brilliant. Stop bullshitting, it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> this is another okay. one that I thought too. Um, stop being lazy, half-assed is never the, the way to go. I mean, these are, these are like right. some of my ideas, you know, they're in my head. Stop hanging out with losers. Quality mm. advice from a 54-year-old woman who knows what she's talking about. And then the very last one I love, it's stop and breathe, slow down and enjoy the moment. All right. So you're like, well, uh -uh, you know, <laughs> stop putting, I, you stop know, putting? I think I'm going to give it a try, but Lord knows what you'll end up with. Here's another <laughs> good one. Stop putting toxic shit in your body. Uh, Quality, quality information. <laughs> and 
there is, you know, there's no way other than to say, tap into your personality, tap into what you know, or what's around you. What are you excited about? I mean, do you know how to grow the hell out of tomatoes and want to make it like a tomato growing tip idea? I mean, I don't know. I've been so concentrated on mushroom related content lately that I made myself try to not do another zine or, and of mushroom related stuff because my postcard project is also mushrooms. So, so we're, we're at the point where I say, does anybody have questions or have you already like decided you're doing it and you're on it, man? Everybody's not, most people are nodding. Okay, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I actually do have a question. Yeah. Um, so you said, you said one side, eight and a half by 11. Is that like the whole thing? Uh-huh, that's eight I, pages. What you need to do, I'm, you need to okay. look at the PDF, get the PDF and print it out and follow the instructions okay. on the PDF to make the little book, the, the actual zine about zines. Okay. And once you've done that, you could just fold up a white sheet of paper in and of itself, okay, into the zine with the center cut and fold it up and just make a mock-up like um i i it, it's not showing up because of the the slide being so bright but um, okay i just took a pen and made a mock-up of my ideas and um i will make a fancier version of that um you could just take something that's like like the way dennis did his where he actually just xeroxed the torn off sheet of his pad that was sitting in his desk All right I mean, I, I've got an idea. I'm, I'm in. Cost. I'm in. You I'm better in. I'm be. I'm going to do it. <laughs> once you make one, you will, once you make that little zine about zines and you see how it is, you can start processing it. Yeah. It's actually a pretty basic structure and you can go two-sided. That's obviously a little more complicated, but um, I'm not going to put a no, a no go on that because some people will want to do that. Other questions? Okay. What I was thinking we do is we would do another one of these in two or three weeks where I go into a little bit more detail and I can show some more samples and I can show some suggestions for looking at what are called zine review magazines. You can get zines that review other zines and it's a really good way um, I have a bunch of these to like totally tap in to like what people think about the work that's out there. And it's because it's like a book review, but about zines. And they go into pretty good detail and they show you the zines. You know what I mean? They're showing you the pictures of the zines and telling you a whole lot about them, which is a better way to actually understand the zine when you're hearing a little bit more than just seeing it, right? Um, I have a bunch of books, some of these magazines that I've been collecting over the years that I thought might be interesting for people to look at some of that and to also hear more in detail about the dice, the dice draws, the distributions. Yeah, I call them dice draws. Dish draws, is it dish draws instead of dice draws? I don't know, it's like this idea, I know for sure that it's zine with like an EE. -E like magazine. Like magazine. But if you say distribution, which is like a distribution group is what dice draws stands for. Um, distribution it was it a distro instead of a distro i don't know see i i know a lot but i don't know everything and um i know it my way um and my way is like, it would be distro it might be distro yeah yeah it might be distro instead so anyway so we, we'll have another meetup and that'll be like you know a, the more advanced version and if people are sharing um whatever their progress is um and also, um, just to remind you guys, we still have our We Zine show up. Um, I'm not going to be plugging it anymore because we've already discussed what a half-assed, miserable job of presentation was done and how not only was my name misspelled, but you guys weren't even in the, the NEBA thing wasn't presented right and we weren't even listed as a participant in NEBA. And when I, I was has joy, Christina has joy, which I do have joy, you know, so maybe, maybe that, I don't know. 
what happened with that. <laughs> the last thing on our list before we head out is we were going to take a peek at, I don't know if anybody did it. I did it. Um, I made a book art prompt piece from Carolyn's you lovely did. three words. Would you like to review the three words for us, Carolyn? Um, it's um, miniature, muse, monotype. Yep. Excellent. And what what were you thinking when you chose those words? Uh, give us a little more of the, the how to well, what. On that. The whole miniature thing was that I didn't want to uh, make it a big deal to make a book. Okay. And uh, the muse was because everyone has one. So it, it, it goes across the board, you know, you, your own muse is your own muse. And monotype, because it started with an M at that point. Okay, well, the M's, I like that idea. <laughs> and the M's. I, and I, do, I do a lot of monotypes myself, and I know a lot of the members in the group do. So I thought that wasn't too far of a stretch as far as the technique goes. Well, I think it makes sense. Yeah. Do you want to show something? No, I have nothing. You have nothing? Uh-uh. Okay, well, I can show mine. I, I was building the box for the, for my postcards. <laughs> I've been weaving, so I, I didn't, I don't, I haven't, no. Mm -mm. Okay, well, I'm gonna it's share the story. off for this summer. I'm gonna share, you look like you're you're hot. Is it hot in your apartment? No, I'm having a hot flash. You're having a hot flash, that's okay, I, I know that feeling. I'm, I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna share the screen one more time and let's uh, get another slideshow going here. All right. So this is uh, Mushroom Muse. Oh. Um, mushroom Muse is about, um, the fascination that I'm finding with my shiitake mushrooms that I'm growing on my shiitake, I'm, I'm doing the oak logs with the wooden peg dowels hammered into them that have the baby shiitake spores in it. And then they colonize the log and they, they grow up out of the log after the log gets um, doused really strongly with water from a good rain or soaked in like a wooden tub. I have um, a couple of big tubs that I can put the wood into to soak them overnight and it triggers them. And I'm known as a marbler and there was something about some of the, my marbled imagery lately that makes me think of mushrooms um, as well. And um, Carolyn was kind enough to teach Anya and I about Enzo, which is a, a Japanese art meditation process with ink making these circles and I had several pieces that were very much just too many circles just a whole lot of circles on one page that I wasn't in love with really and I thought that making um, one of those so I took an, and did a single sheet structure 16 panels so it was basically four by four grid and then I created up one side and down the other up one side to create a long accordion. It's kind of like creates like a V shape or, or an M and a, or a W turned around. It's a way that you cut the single sheet to make it become an accordion. Um, and then I back mounted or drum bound, which is making two pages stick together from the back sides on some pages, but not all pages. And I took the Enzos and I made them into mushroom caps with the gill, gill sides. Um, let's move forward here. So it's just really chopping up all those Enzos into- it's Stunning. It's, it's like um, chopping up the mushrooms to make a stir fry. Yeah. The, yeah, I mean, it's also the idea of the cyclical nature of death and rebirth that mushrooms represent. Um, you know, they put loose this spore spray that I've also been photographing. But the marbling of the, these marbling images and, and the others, I, I don't really know if you could call it exactly a monotype exactly, but um, this is the piece I made. Um, yeah, and it's definitely miniature. And it's definitely miniature. Yeah. 
and you can pose it in different ways. And some of the ink um, is showing through on some of the pages. So you're getting to see a little echo from the other side. Really but cool. Really, um, that was the piece. Yeah. And um, nice. yeah. And um, I had a little sheer organza. This is like completely transparent organza little bag. You can see how tiny it is um, that I found um, in my stuff. So, I have a ton of those. Yeah, I mean, it just, I just, I couldn't think of what else to put it in, um, but it, it's just a little guy. And I see a whole bunch of the other Enzo's in the background. I, I found the, the, the pen, the doing the pen work to make the gills on the Enzo's made me like the Enzo's more. I don't know why, but the simpleness of it is, I, I, I'm resistant. Does that make sense? Well, it made them more the simplicity, I guess, which I think is kind of a funny feeling. I think it made them yours and yours alone. It's also kind of, to me, the idea of picking at things. <laughs> that seems like a weird expression to use, but it seemed like I, I needed to pick at it a little to make it go where I wanted it to, which I think sometimes art is, has that feeling. Oh, yeah, most yeah. definitely. But it's like I've got this thing on my arm that I keep messing with, and like, you know, there's there's things in your head that you keep like negative dialogues. I mean, so I have a tendency to want to conceptualize like why this feels right to me now versus before. Yeah, I don't know. I like having these words to make it stimulate like different thoughts. Yeah. So I'm enjoying some of these projects. Yeah. Yeah, they, and also I think it, um, when you do something new like that, you don't know how it's going to come into your own practice. Yeah. And so it, it's like, I like doing it, but where does it fit in? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. For me as a teacher, a lot of these things just end up becoming like a, something to show in a class to help people understand an idea. Um, because I mean, I don't know where else this will ever, like, is this ever going to see the light of day anywhere else? I mean, I don't know. So we've got some background noise. I don't know if there's something that, Christina, you can let me, let turn me, off. Uh, let me mute. Who, who, who has it? You. I don't know. That's not me. Up, oh, it was Gail. It was Gail. It was Gail. Yeah. It was saying that I don't. I don't know what it was saying, but it was saying the same thing over and over again. It was kind of interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, fun. Um, nice little quick um, visit with everybody today. Anybody else have any thoughts? Any projects you're working on for the summer you want to share? Um, no. No? Not right now. Have you, have you worked with your bamboo yet? Is it dried no. out? Um, um, half, one side is dried out, but... Um, I put mine out on those really hot days in the sun and they got yeah. totally dried out, like immediately. Yeah, mine did not. But Carolyn and I and Anya, we went to this person's house that had too much bamboo and they were like, please, you know, we need to keep it from taking over our yard. And we, we got to cut down a bunch of bamboo. So oh, look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my, yeah. I was I was at the house last night. She had a party. It was some um, a Japanese a festival. It's called a star festival, and I can't remember the word for. Did you make any origami? And we hung we hung wishes in the bamboo forest. Oh, so we, we cool. got a bunch of this bamboo. See to, but see how. Oh yeah, how it's it, not quite there yet. Yeah. Not quite there yet because it kept raining on it. You know, I'm still working on this Aunt Janet's house emptying of this house. And I, I did a, another shopping uh, day where I just like, you know, took everything I wanted um, basically and did a huge load to St. Vincent's of DePaul. Oh, but anyway, um, 
there was a bamboo wind chime that I had given her like 25 years ago that she hung in her living room all those years. It was covered, just filthy, covered in dust. I cleaned it up and I hung it outdoors. Uh huh. So that it actually gets wind. I and thought it was a bad mojo play. for a beautiful bamboo wind chime to be indoors for 25 years like that. Oh. Silliness. So that was my good deed of the day, hanging up uh, and cleaning that wind chime. And I've been having, um, I have a call and response established with a songbird. It's a little teeny brown bird. I don't know what kind of bird it is yet, but he and I, he puts his head back and he sings. And then I say, Birkin, Birkin. And he goes back and forth with me in the yard. He'll do it like maybe 10 times in a row with me back and forth. Yeah. And now he's um, moving closer and closer to me each time. Like at first he was maybe like in a, like 30 yards away. Now he is like 10 or 10 yards. Wow. Right, right over as soon as he hears me, he comes over. Cool. That, that's just been over the last two days. So um, I'm, I'm pumped. I just read a book called The Secret Garden and it, it's about that kind of interaction with children and how the garden brings back life yeah um, it's a classic i can't remember the author's name it's a woman yeah i've heard and, of it. and it was done in you know like jane austen time so i think because it yeah. maybe a little bit later but um gee it was darling and it was that kind of if if you if you haven't read it i think you might enjoy it it's really cute I'm digging on gardening so much, though I probably should read it. I have heard of it. Yeah. Well, it's not the it's not the one that I think you're thinking of. Oh, okay. Um, I'll I'll send you the author's name. Um, I have been totally wailing on marbling, and when I say wailing, I literally mean that because the um, of Mystic Film Festival um has a logo that is a whale tail coming up out of the water and they have asked me a lot well gabriella our vp has highly suggested that they ask me <laughs> um, to make a bunch of greeting cards of uh, marbling greeting cards to help with a uh, promotional campaign that they're they're trying to do a fundraising effort and they want to um have these card sets i guess as some kind of like gift for people over a you know a certain dollar amount of donation um so i've been ma making a ton of marbled images that have a pattern that looks like whale tails flipping in the water wow i mean a lot of them a lot big <laughs> sheets a lot i mean like i'm so sick of these blues and this whale tail that i'm about to scream so i'm done finally i finished that yesterday too now just kind of decide on the card design how, how I'm going to do it. It's just going to be like a collage card or a little piece of paper folded around and maybe stitched in the metal so it stays put. I, I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Nice. Yeah. Other project. Who has projects? Anne, you must be up to, Anne, you must be up to something. What are, what are you working on these days? Um, well, I'm doing a lot of drawing. Um, I've been making um concertina books that are um, irregular and they're really more sculptural uh, oh, yeah, pieces yeah. that I, you know I'll fold them and then I'll start cutting into them and uh, sort of starting with a drawing and then seeing what kinds of shapes that drawing suggests for the book so they they end up being like um, somewhat architectural. I was gonna say I've seen some ideas like that that had like a skyline effect mm -hmm. where across the top of them the bottom was flat when you accorded it out but the top was irregular yeah interesting yeah mine are more irregular than that <laughs> <laughs> great yeah anybody doing any fairs because i know fairs are starting to open up again right um craft shows and such um, I do have one exciting zine idea that I forgot to mention. I think I mentioned it to the group a couple of times. Um, we have a booth. Neva has a booth at the Watertown Zine Festival at the Watertown Library. It's in October. 
Um, it was free. Um, I have a booth as well. I put it in my name instead of um, the Junyan's name, just because I didn't want to freak them out too much. You know, I mean, most people would sign up with the, whatever their zine's name is as like the booth name. I, I just left it as my name because I didn't want to, you know, it is a, a, a public library after all. Um, but the NEBA booth, I thought that we could um, not only have the zines there, but maybe even see if we could raise some money somehow. Yeah, we could uh, sell the offering, set. Selling a few. I mean, I don't know. I mean, do you think um, do you think that requires an additional email from the 2020 zine people? Uh, since that isn't in the release, I could make it part of this year's release to say that for fundraising, we can sell individual ones. Right now, the release is letting us make them for, like, so far we've given out three sets of zines to people who have given a, a lot of money to NEVA. Donations. Okay. As a thank you for donations. $500 donations. And a 100. We did one 100 and two 500s. And I just made them. You know, I just did it myself. So then... But why would we do it individually? Why wouldn't we sell the set? It has 16 zines, 15 zines. Sell the um, set for I was thinking if we if the we set for dollars but but that's a you know, if we do them individually and they're low priced, we would probably actually sell more than if we did the set. Then don't I would think, think you think? have I would think you'd have to contact the, the artists. I do too, yeah. Yeah. We could make it part of the release for this year though, like the release statement. Yes. For this year. Yeah. Or maybe we just have stickers and the buttons and our brochure and we call it a day. Or we have them there. I mean, I think well, we should sure. have, um, we're gonna have two of them, right? Two two years by october we're going to have our september group maybe we should have um once we get the set group of people we should have a meeting that covers this before people sign the release uh -huh. you know, so we can say what are your thoughts on this yeah. and i can email people from the previous year and get get them to to sign off on it i mean i mean they've signed off on us giving it as a thank you gift i mean but that's different than selling it, you know? Yes, it is. It's very different. Yeah. I think it maybe we shouldn't do it and just have them there for people to look at. And um, maybe the zine about zines could be just given to people. Yes. As like a unfolded. Flat. Like unfolded themselves. That's right. As and a we'll giveaway. Have, I'm we'll have some I don't have a problem there. giving that away. We'll just have some giveaways and make it the NEBA booth be informational. Yeah, well, we can discuss it because we haven't had a booth, a NEPA booth yet. This is our first real go at it. So we might need to, to do a little more research into what people's thoughts are. This idea of the survey is going to help. Okay. This in the survey. And who knows, if you guys come up with other ideas about questions or things that we didn't cover, um, we can always come, you know, loop back around to it in an email and our next meeting that's going to have a little more, a little more stuff on zines too. Um, just to, and maybe I'll make a post too. I, I need to get busy with the post. I've been busy. Uh, the garden is getting me busy. So I'm a little behind on Neva posting. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll catch up at some point. <laughs> You're fine. It's summer. You're I off. Know, I know. I know. I'm not, I'm not upset. I'm super busy. I've been, I've been, uh, having some fun. Yeah. Believe me, if I'm not having fun at this, I won't continue to do it any longer. Yeah. I'm not trying to scare anybody. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not stopping. <laughs> All right. Any, anything else or we're going to sign off? I'm going to stop the record now. Thank you for joining us. Let's hit the stop on that.